Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to a Sunday lesson with me. Hopefully right now I'm getting to see a few of y'all at our outdoor worship, um, our first in-person worship in so long, um, and hopefully I'm getting to see some of y'all. Also, I wanna share some announcements and some things coming up for us. Um, first, for everyone at Lover's Lane, next Sunday, the 11th, is our first kind of in-person doing different services Sunday, kind of our first in-person Sunday that isn't outdoors. And so y'all um, can check on Facebook, your parents can check on Facebook or the Lover's Line website or anywhere that y'all find Lover's Line info and it has all the different worship services with times and where they are going to be. It could be a little different from where they um, normally were just because of space and we want enough space for any and all who want to come. And so remember to be checking for that. I hope to see y'all there. But more preteen related things and special for us, um, that same Sunday, the 11th at 3 p.m., we are having a Zoom call for everyone um, and it is a get to know you call. So from our promotion Sunday, we haven't had a chance to, for everyone to meet, you know, for all our new fifth graders and our sixth graders to meet and have fun and talk with each other. And that's really what this night is all about. It is, or this afternoon. Um, it'll be about an hour and we're, I'm gonna have some fun, maybe a little icebreaker questions here and there, but I'm really hoping that y'all can just kind of um, take the reins on your own and maybe just get to know each other a little bit. Um, and it'll just be a fun, time talking and hanging out. And the other Zoom call that we're going to have is going to be on the 25th, um, that last Sunday in October, and it is going to be a Halloween Kahoot trivia afternoon. It is also at 3 p.m. It has the same Zoom details. Y'all will be getting a postcard in the mail hopefully soon, and it will have all the info on there. And I will say, if you do dress up as something well, you get bonus points, which can make or break if you win big time. So um, hopefully I will get to see a lot of you there. I'm really excited to get to see our new fifth graders um, and get to know them a little bit more and get to play some games together. So I hope to see you all there. Again, you'll get a postcard in the mail um, with the Zoom info. And if you don't, I will put the Zoom info also on our Facebook page. So I hope to see you all there. Today we are starting a new series. It is called redeeming ritual. We're talking about rituals that we have in our church and in in the bigger church, the United Methodist Church, and today we're talking about communion. And communion is one of those things that is definitely a ritual for us. We do it on a schedule at Lover's Lane. We do it the first Sunday of every month, and um, we haven't done it in a while. We do have some outdoor communion sometimes, but it is something that also might be easy to go in the motion, take the bread, dip it in the juice, eat it, go back to our seat, and we do that once a month. You know, sometimes we lose lose sight of why we do communion, or, or maybe we don't know why we do communion, but it's something we've always done in church, and so we just do it, and you get to eat something, and it's awesome. Um, and, and so today we're gonna talk about communion. Maybe you haven't heard of where why we do communion before, um, or why, we do certain things that we do during communion. And so today we're gonna to talk about that. So today I'm in Luke chapter 22. Luke is our third gospel. Um, we've been in the gospels a lot lately, which is great for y'all to remember and to know where they are. They are the first four books of the New Testament and Luke is number three. And so today we're also looking, um, it's called the Last Supper or the Lord's Supper or um, anything along those terms. We normally just call it the Last Supper. And so today we are going to read that story um, and it is, it's a pretty interesting one. And so I'm going to start reading. I'm in chapter 22. I'm reading verses 14 through 23. Um, and this is uh, my book, my book, my Bible calls it the institution of the Lord's Supper. So let's dive in and read what it says. It says, and when the hour came, he reclined at table and the apostles with him, or the disciples. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup and when he had given thanks, he said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. 
He took the bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, the cup after they had eaten saying, this cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But behold, the hand of him who betrays me is with me on this table. For the son of man goes as it has been determined, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to question one another, which of them it could be who was going to do this. So we know who did it. We know Judas is the one who betrayed Jesus. Let's talk about communion. Communion for us, you know, we go down the aisle at the church and we take a piece of bread. We go to the next person, we dip it in the juice, we eat it, we go back to our seat. And that is our communion normally. Uh, and that's kind of what happened here, except it was bread and wine, and they did the same thing. They split up the bread, they ate it with the, with the wine, and Jesus said the same sort of things that we hear on a communion Sunday. You know, we, there are some times where I take communion and I, I just, I just do it. You know, I don't really remember to sit and think about why we do communion. Um, and it's something that is really incredible when you think about it. You know, when we think about the body of Christ being that piece of bread, that, that big loaf of bread, and there is a piece being broken off for every single person in the church, which is a lot of people, you know, and there's one piece for everyone, everyone, even people that have never been to our church before. And each piece is being broken off for another person. That's exactly what happened to Jesus's body. You know, the crucifixion story is really brutal and it's really hard um, to read sometimes and to think about what Jesus went through, but breaking off a piece of that bread for every single person is a really amazing representation. And when we think about that, uh, it's just something that kind of takes it to a whole nother level for me at least. And um, with the uh, with the juice or uh, representing the blood, same sort of thing. Every single piece of bread is being dipped. You know, Jesus' blood was shed for us and a lot of it was shed. And so when we're dipping that juice or we're dipping that bread in the juice, it is such an amazing kind of remembrance of Jesus, which is exactly what he says in the Bible. And um, that is something I kind of challenge y'all to do whenever we take communion next or whenever you take communion next, remember why we do it. it. It is something that, you know, sometimes when, most of the time actually, when I do these videos and, you know, I'm telling y'all to remember these things or for this week, do this or think about different ways you can do X, Y, and Z. And this one kind of hits a little differently because, you know, I do communion the same exact way as y'all do communion, you know? and it is one of those things where I also forget sometimes why communion is so important and why it is so amazing of a symbolic ritual that we do in our church. Um, and so next time you do take communion, remember why we're taking communion. Um, but the final step of that is eating the bread and juice, you know, and that is also something that can be seen as extremely powerful. Each one of us has a piece of that bread and a little bit of that juice in our body. And that is exactly what Jesus is like for us. You know, we have the Holy Spirit in us, and that is another form of the Trinity, which is God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, which is a totally other conversation to have. But it, it's that representation of Jesus is with us, and that body and um, that blood or that bread and that juice is in us, and it is there for us. Jesus did all those things for us so that all the wrong things we did, all the mistakes we make, all the lies we say, all, all of the bad is forgiven and we can be with him. And so taking that, that bite, you know, eating the bread and the juice is a whole nother representation as well. And so all of that being in one spiritual ritual we do is something I think is really, really cool. Um, there are so many things to think about during your process of communion, and I want y'all to go and remember that this week. Remember that the next time you take communion. So I hope y'all um, um, enjoyed this lesson and remembered why we do communion and what it exactly means and represents and what, what other things you may have taken from it. Um, and so I hope y'all have a great week. I hope that is filled with so much fun. I hope y'all are doing well in school. Um, it is a struggle sometimes, but I hope that y'all are 
sticking with it and having a good time. And so I will see y'all next time. Bye.